Right, okay, so Spitfire looking very much the part as you can see. What we've done is we've done a little bit of the sky colour just down in here and we've banded that off. And to be honest, it's 14 mil. So we just made a strip 14 mil with a bit of Tamiya tape and we've done it in two halves as well so you don't get the curve effect. So we just pop those on and make sure they're pushed down securely and we're good to go. So with it all priming, you're using it to make sure everything is absolutely perfect and we're happy it is. So now we can push on, all right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the underside so the colour we're using for this one is this. So this is AK's RC289, which is medium sea grey, which is your BS number 637. Okay, really very, very nice paints. I use them as a lacquer. So although you can thin them with other stuff, I like to use uh, rapid uh, thinners, as you know, and it works really, really well for this stuff. The one thing you'll notice though, if you are doing it in lacquers, is that you thin it and thin it and thin it. And I'm thinning this to around about 70% thinner. So you certainly get your money's worth down on this one, but what it'll do is give us a really nice smooth finish right the way over, all right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the entire the underside first, then we can mask all that up once we're happy with it and then what we can do is exactly flip it over we can do the top side with the gray with the ocean gray and then the dark green on there as we make our way through so very much like we did the other one we just check our flow we don't have to do this dusty gripper coat first or anything else we can be quite positive as it goes down so really we're not going to do this thing as we've done before with perhaps like three coats it's just going to be two so one's going to go right the way over it and because it's going to be a little bit tacky and then we can go in with a heavy coat over that one to give it that gloss look right the way through. There's a couple of areas in here we're just going to give a little bit more attention to. Obviously that being the guns, so the cannons have been uh, put on now and things like that. So they're going to get just a little bit now right the way over. So that's just so those are act a little bit like a primer if you like. And then what we can do is hit the extractor and get this coat of paint now. There we go, that simple, that quick. 
Now we've got a primer down onto there, you'd be amazed of how quickly you can just get paint to go down and lock in. And hopefully you can see, looking very nice and glossy, but again, this has got a rapid drying thinner is in there, so it's not gonna to take too long to dry at all. The same time we're doing that, obviously we've done these already, so we've actually got the flaps sorted and done. We've actually got the wheel wells all painted as well. So anything that's gonna need that uh, light gray under there, now's the time to do it. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna let that uh, dry off for around about 10 minutes, have a good look at it, make sure we haven't missed anywhere. If we're happy, what we can do is then flip it over, mask up down this bottom side down in here, and obviously up around the front, and we can get the top gray up there, all ready for the green after that. Okay, so we have Masked up under here, so really straightforward job. It's just a little bit of uh, 18 mil masking tape across the front, across the leading edges, just to bring up these ones. Gonna have yellow uh, identification marks on the front end, so we're not worried about that. The main area is here, so obviously we put tape on the actual underside, because they're done, and then obviously we've got tape coming along and just protecting the underside here. Because we're spraying technically from this angle, we should get no overspray anywhere else. But if you wanted to, you could cover the entire thing under there. So for the color for this one, going old school, Tamiya's, uh, this is their Ocean Grey XF82. To be honest, it's a really nice color. One of their newer ones that they released, I say newer, it's probably about 10 years old now. But anyway, I'm mixing it exactly the same again with some lacquer thinners. So we're putting that in and it's around about same thing, but not quite as, thinned as we've just seen before. So this is now probably around about 60% uh, thinners to 40% paint down in here. So we'll just check our flow. Now, obviously we are doing, you can see it here, the camo pattern, all right? So here on top, but from our point of view, we're gonna show you the simplest and easiest way of doing it. So we're gonna do the entire top side in this gray right the way over. Then we'll mask it up and we'll mask the gray areas and we'll do the green. Now the reason for doing the gray first, then the green, I always work lightest to darkest. So it's just because it's easier to cover with the green than it is to go the gray over the green. So if you imagine, start with your lightest color. So we actually did the sky for the nose and for the banding. Then we've done the underside in the lighter gray. Now we're doing the darker gray on the top side. And then to finish off, what we'll actually do is the actual the green on there. Then lastly, we'll mask up and we'll put in these identification bands, the yellow ones on the front there. So really you're just working your way naturally through the colors. Again, personal choice, but I've always done it this way and always had good results for it. So this is pretty straightforward. We hit the extractor, same as we've done pretty much every other coat. So we're just gonna come in and to start with, we're gonna do the areas where we've masked. So again, nice little dusty effects. First to start with, so it's two coats. So we just put it down over these mast areas as we were saying. No problem, just down in here. And then obviously we'll just flip this round and we'll do the leading edges of these wings. Now obviously you don't want to spray from this side because you'll get overspray running down, all right? So you always want to be spraying downwards. So we're just going to do leading edges of these wings. And we can do the guns. So we're just going to spray the tops of these guns. And again, top side down. And then we're just going to run around the outside of the wing, around the tip. And then we can work our way back. And the tip. Nice and gentle. And again, we're not trying to flood it or anything else like that. So we just basically got this nice wing done. So again, you can just a little bit of trouble when it's coming through. Hold on one sec. This is, I haven't used Tamiya acrylic paints forever. And I think this is just showing me why. There we go. Coming through again, come on. And this is why I don't like using acrylics, or even fake acrylics. But what we'll do, is show you how we can rectify this. So, easiest way to do this is pop the back off, grab the needle, retract the needle, and then just give it a little nudge back and forth. 
and just see if that clears it. And it doesn't appear it's clearing much. We've got lots of paint in there and that's all fine. So now we're just going to try and see if we can pump the trigger to force it through. Now what's happened is there's probably a thicker bit of paint in there and it's just come through. So we just need to pump the trigger to free that up or to melt it so it's enabled to come through. And again this is purely because of my own fault because I haven't actually used this paint now in probably six years so chances are I haven't mixed it enough it's still a little bit thick and that's what's happened so it started off all well and good no problem at all but now one of these thicker bits which I didn't mix totally is getting stuck in there you see that's full trigger pull and you see how it slows so what we're going to do is open up all the taps so we go full trigger full air and we're just going to pump this in an effort to try and free this up and I forget people say to me about Phil why do you don't you use acrylics anymore this is exactly the reason why and to be honest I have got it in lacquer but I thought it'd be interesting to show it so okay we're in a situation now where that's not going to move all right so what we're going to do is we're just going to come back here we're going to offload our color back into here because we're going to do something we're going to blow this through and then we're just going to add more fillers into here we'll give this a quick whiz right and we're going to just see if we get the thinners to come through so we just pump him pump him here it comes now the thinners is in So now we've got good flow, no problem at all. So what we're going to do is just put a little bit more thinners in here, just thinners. We'll just hit the extractor a minute. And now we've got no problem at all. And you want to make sure that it closes off just as quick. So, you know, there's nothing in there stopping it all going through. So again, this is that thing about not mixing it in the colour cup because that can happen. So what we're going to do is put a little bit more thinners in here. We're going to come in with a little bit of paint and we're going to mix this a lot more in here with that thinners. So the point being, it will melt anything that's going down in here and go along because it's just not mixing those paints together. It's not getting rid of the thicker stuff or anything else like that. Now, hopefully, that should cure that problem. So let's move the nose out of the way, and then we can check our flow. And yeah, now we're cooking on gas. So what we need to do now, air pressure back down. All right, we'll move that out of the way. Get our clean again, and we'll try again. So again, same thing, nice and wet finish, nice wet coat, so when it dries, it dries all nice and smooth. Tops. And then again. Tails and rudders. And we're just trying to keep it nice and smooth. And what we'll do, we're just going to grab it from the wheel wells underneath here and again all looking nice so same thing so when you spray and you go past each area 
before coming back. Don't stop on the parts, otherwise you'll double it up. So once that's done, we can just come back and we're out of paint. So just air, just to dry it around. Hopefully you can see how nice and smooth all of that still is. So we'll just do a quick refill. We're not going to need much, it's just this last bit. Just again though, same thing, plenty of mixing. Make sure you get it all out. And that's the thing as well, we always put the thinners in first so the paint doesn't go down to the needle straight away and bung up. Okay, in here, there we go. So, check our flow and skim. There we go, a little bit just hanging around the rudder. So those wings. There it is. All looking very nice indeed. Can't see a problem with that. So what we'll do, we'll just place her down there, let her totally dry off again, and then when we're all happy, totally dry. And to be honest, this particular time, what we'll do is we'll leave this for around about 12 hours because the thing is we need to mask over this and we want to make sure this has totally gone off. We're not dealing with lacquers either. What Tamiya is is an, basically an alcohol-based acrylic, again. Okay? So it doesn't quite dry as hard uh, and as quickly as obviously you might find with other products such as Hataka, real lacquer plates, and not actually the AK, although they're very similar to this, AK does tend to act more like a lacquer than anything else. Anyway, that's fine. Looking good though. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll actually put the camo work on top.